Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks. Now, if you are in any Jaguar Facebook group or if you are involved in the Jaguar Twitter community, you know everybody and their mom has a different opinion on what the Jacksonville Jaguars should do at the quarterback position in 2000. In 19, and that is the biggest storyline to follow for the Jags in 2019. Hell, I've already made three videos about it, but today we're going to be just answering the question everybody wants to know my opinion on, and that is should the Job Wars go out and trade for their guy and get their next franchise quarterback in the 2019 NFL draft, or should they go ahead and sign a veteran quarterback, maybe for a stopgap guy, or maybe even for the long haul? You don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is should the Jacksonville Jaguars draft a rookie quarterback or stick with a veteran presence? Let's get it. Now, there are pros and cons to each side of the coin when talking about what the Jaguars should do at the quarterback position. Let's talk about the veteran quarterback position real quick and the benefits of doing that. Now, the 2021 draft class and the 2022 draft class and the 2020 draft class even have better rookie quarterbacks than in this year's draft class this is the weakest draft class that's going to be around in the next two three years the next after those they're going to have a lot of talented cats a lot of guys that are projected to be really good pro style nfl quarterbacks but this year the only quarterback that's really worth a first round selection or trading up to get is Dwayne haskins now the jaguars fucked around won a game against miami and really fucked around and fucked up their draft order um, as far as their chances of just straight up drafting a guy like Dwayne Haskins. So they are putting themselves in a situation where they have to trade up to get Dwayne Haskins. Now you look at some of the trades recently in the NFL that guys have done to trade up and get their guy. Um, you look at guys like the Bears did for Mitchell Trubisky giving up two first round picks. The thing is, is Dwayne Haskins really is not worth giving up two first round picks for you know your whole entire future especially if fans up not working out and you want to draft him a replacement almost immediately um i think that the jacks have enough talented players on their team that they can include a draft pick you know from this year's first round and maybe either this year or next year's second round pick and as well as maybe like a defensive lineman or a running back uh aka leonard fournette you know they could trade somebody a player along with some picks in order to move up in the draft to get their guy in Dwayne Haskins. Because the Jaguars, if they're going to stick at number seven, I don't think they go quarterback. I think they go best player available from the position of need that they actually really need, like the wide receiver position, um, left tackle to move Cam Robinson out to right tackle. You know, there's a lot of things that the Jaguars could do at seven to benefit their team as a whole. But, you know, they have a whole offseason to really kind of play the field and see where they stand as far as being able to trade up to get a guy like Dwayne Haskins. There's a lot of people out there that are really big Daniel Jones guys. There's people out there that are really big Drew Locke guys, you know, all these other different quarterbacks. Will Greer, especially, that's another guy that a lot of people are very passionate about. And they're saying, why not select him at seven? It's because those guys aren't necessarily first round caliber quarterbacks. And I'm sorry if you're really high on one of those guys, but that's just not a guy you select at number seven when, you know, Dwayne Haskins, I think, is up here and the rest of the quarterbacks are all kind of right here. And they're all kind of similar. Like a, a Will Greer, a Drew Locke, and a Daniel Jones, you're getting basically the same result out of all three of those quarterbacks. You know, you're getting a guy that really needs to settle down and sit behind a guy for a year. None of those three are going to make an instant impact as a starter in the NFL. The only quarterback that can do that is Dwayne Haskins. Now, the fact of the matter is this. I think the Jags can trade up to get Haskins without having to trade two first-round picks. That's the big thing for me as far as a rookie quarterback goes is that I do not want to give up two first-round picks, especially if Haskins turns out to not work out because, you know, the Jaguars are cursed as far as drafting quarterbacks go. So I think if the price is right with the players that we have, you know, like the letter four nets, um, Carlos Hyde even maybe, but, you know, and some defensive players as well. Telvin Smith is another guy that comes to mind. If we are able to trade one of those players, 
give him the first round pick, you know, our number seven pick, and then maybe a second from this year or a second from next year uh, in order to move up and get a guy like Dwayne Haskins. I really think that's reasonable. But like I said, if we have to give up two first round picks and, and a player even, it's definitely not worth it. Let's not trade the whole entire barn to move up and get a rookie quarterback. So still on the topic of rookie quarterbacks, a lot of people are asking, Treep, how high are the Jaguars going to have to trade up in order to get their quarterback? You know, a lot of things are going to change between now and the NFL draft. Like I said, I'm going to be covering the draft very heavily from January all the way into April until it happens. So stay tuned for that type of coverage. But, you know, different shit happens every single day to affect um, what the draft is going to be. And one thing that really affected what the draft's going to be is the fact that Kyle Murray declared for the NFL draft. And that made things interesting. Because the Arizona Cardinals head coach Cliff Kingsbury said uh, last year that if he was in the NFL and he had the number one overall pick, he would take Kyle Murray. And now he's an NFL coach. He has the number one pick. And let's see if he takes Kyle Murray. I mean, there's another guy obviously on the board, Nick Bosa who's a stud and should be going number one overall to the Arizona Cardinals. But then that also bids the question, what are the Cardinals going to do with Josh Rosen? And, you know, they might ship him off, you know, who knows. But I think if the Cardinals do end up drafting Kyle Murray at number one, that's a silly move. Uh, first and foremost, because you need to get protection for Josh Rosen, because I really think Rosen could be a good NFL quarterback. Uh, you just got to give him time to throw. Um, so to go from a one-year head coach fire him and get rid of the quarterback in the same year you know I think that would be silly so I really don't think the whole drafting Kyle Murray thing's gonna happen and then you just you look at the whole draft order and you look at teams that are really QB needy uh, one team in particular is the number six overall pick uh, New York Giants and then you also got the Raiders who are also ahead of the Jaguars now those are two teams the Jags are gonna have to trade up in front of to get a quarterback uh, both of them have quarterbacks right now that are okay but you know they still they might be looking for guys to replace them and uh, that guy could be Dwayne Haskins you know in New York's case he could sit for a year um, in Oakland's case they're more looking for a guy that could really step up and take over for Derek Carr I think if the Jags are gonna trade up and get Dwayne Haskins the highest they have to trade up is three either two or three. I think they could get the second or the third pick. They don't need to go all the way up and trade for number one because I really don't think Arizona is going to threaten the job wars in any way as far as who they're going to pick at the number one overall pick unless they do some trade with Josh Rosen, which a lot of people have been like talking about that Josh Rosen will get traded to Jacksonville or something. Like, <laughs> like you know, something weird like that. But, you know, who knows? Um, I think that the Jags, again, they need to trade up to like at least two or three in order to really kind of have a real shot at getting Haskins. And I think they should do it before the draft because, uh, God, I'm just going to be so stressed out during the draft if they don't do it before the draft because I'm going to be like, are we going to trade up or not? Are we going to get Dwayne Haskins or not? But I guess by that time, free agency would have passed by and I would know who the quarterback is and if we have one or if we don't. And speaking of free agent quarterbacks. Now let us talk about the appeal of bringing in a veteran quarterback to the Jacksonville Jaguars to take the reign. Now you look at the quarterbacks that are available. Um, you got names like Joe Flacco, Nick Foles, Tyrod Taylor. Those are the three guys, the three main veteran quarterbacks that the Jaguars are probably going to be looking at. There's been reports that Joe Flacco and the Jaguars have showed mutual interest um, that they both want to play, you know, that the Jags want Flacco to play for them, and Flacco wants to play for the Jags, and I truly think Joe Flacco is a guy that could work out in Jacksonville, there's so many people that are passionate and think otherwise, but it's not like Joe Flacco's a bad quarterback, like, I mean, I understand the criticism, he's had some bad games in this life, but I mean, to go to the AFC Championship as many times as he did, to beat Tom Brady in the playoffs as much times as he did, like, you can't just sit there and tell me that Joe Flacco's a bad quarterback. I know he's aging, and he didn't even really have that bad of a 2018-19 season before um, getting hurt and Lamar Jackson took over. You know, Flacco, I think, is a guy that could still go for another two to three years. Um, 
and really be productive for another two to three years. And that's perfect because that's right when all these good quarterbacks are going to be coming out to the draft and the Jags can replace them. Hmm, it's almost like it makes too much sense, you know, at this point in time. But one thing that is a bigger thing at just getting the rookie quarterback is the cost and the expense. You're going to see a lot of things in free agency from the Jags, and I think one of those things is not going to be signing a lot of free agents. It's going to be releasing a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people on this 2018 and the 2017, never forget the 2017 Jaguars Wars, roster that are not going to be on the roster this year because they need to save some cap room because they're trying to make moves, you know. And one of those moves is bringing in a quarterback. I think if you see the Jaguars Wars bring in a guy like Flacco or bring in a guy like Foles, who after his performance against the Saints, I'm not too sure about. I think those one of those two... Those two will be a starter for the Jaguars in 2019, without a doubt in my mind, if we sign one of those two. Now, if we sign a guy like Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod Taylor's just going to be there for security reasons. He's going to be a backup, and we're going to still trade up and get our quarterback. You know, cost is another big thing. Like I said, look for us to be cutting a lot of people in free agency. And, you know, if Flacco wants the right amount of money, I think that it's not a bad idea for him to come here. And I also don't think it's a bad idea for him to come here because of the offensive coordinators we have been um, interviewing and that could come to Jacksonville. Now, Bevel, I think a lot of people like him, and I really don't see the appeal. I've seen, you know, the things that he's done. He was one of the key people that pitched for them to draft Russell Wilson in the third round. Okay, cool. You know, like, he also told the Seahawks to throw the ball at the one-yard line when they had Marshawn Lynch, and I don't need that in my life. Um, we're also interviewing Gary Kubiak, who I think has been a decent head coach um, from his time that he's been a head coach, but he's been a really good offensive coordinator, and he does well with quarterbacks that have been in the league for a really long time, and I think that if Kubiak comes in, I think that he could take a veteran quarterback and really show him the system and that he can really run the system well. Because you look at Nick Foles and Joe Flacco, those are both system quarterbacks, you know? Like, they, they do the things they do well, and they do it, and they've perfected it. And I think that if Kubiak can mold into a system to where Flacco or Foles or whatever veteran quarterback we decide to get uh, can be successful in it. And I really, really hope the Jaguars do decide to go with Kubiak. I think Kubiak, out of all those three, is the best option. But I think Del Lupo is also a really good option. I can't say his name. Don't make fun of me in the comments. I think he'd do well with a veteran quarterback, but I think he would also do really well with a rookie quarterback as well. I think that the way he calls passing plays, he's one of the better, uh, you know, passing minds in the NFL as far as an offensive coordinator goes. I think that he'd work well with a rookie to develop him. Um, and I also think he'd do all right with a veteran quarterback. But I think Kubiak, if you were really going to go full veteran mode, I think Kubiak's the option to go for as far as uh, offensive coordinators go to pair up with a veteran quarterback. Um, a lot of Jags fans also are just like, oh, he's old. Oh, I've seen him play for other teams. You know, he's not good. You know, you guys just need to wake up and smell the god dang roses because there's a reason that Flacco has been playing it. I just, I don't know. A lot of people hate on Joe Flacco, and I just don't see it. I understand the game manager sense of him, and I understand that, you know, the last couple of seasons maybe haven't been great for Flacco, but, God, he's done so much, like... And, like, the recent years in the NFL, probably from about 2010 on, like, the guy has done good things. Like, he's beaten the Patriots in the playoffs, I believe, twice. Like, this is a guy that could come in and be a successful quarterback for another two, three years. And that's exactly what we need before all these elite, you know, supposedly really good draft prospects come into the NFL draft for us. And maybe drafting a veteran quarterback isn't as bad as you guys think it will be. Now it is my answer on what I think the Jaguars should do in 2019 with the quarterback position. And honestly, I think the safest bet is to get a veteran quarterback. A lot of people aren't going to like that, and I understand that. But I think that's the safest bet. Especially, I think right now the whole focus should be getting Gary Kubiak. Because I think he will work well with a veteran quarterback, and I think when the time comes for the Jags to go out and get their guy, he will also work well with that guy as well. I just don't think the Jags can trade up all the spots they need to without giving up two first-round picks. And I am not about giving up two first-round picks for Dwayne Haskins, okay? I'm not. 
The Bears were about to get Mitch Trubisky. They got him to the NFC Championship game with a really good defense. And a solid run game. You know what the Jags can do? They can get a veteran quarterback that has some experience, actually knows how to throw the ball, have a really good defense, and have a solid run game. And hopefully by this time, you know, free agency is rolled around. We got the quarterback, and we even got maybe like a Golden Tate, you know, and we go out and we draft the best wide receiver available in the draft with our seventh overall pick. And, you know, we keep building through the draft to fill other holes before we fill the quarterback position permanently because you know we have a veteran guy that can really get the job done i see this thing on a jaguar facebook group that was kind of funny that uh joe flack will bring the jaguars to seven and nine lol that was kind of funny but i really think a guy like flacco could be successful in the system especially especially given the fact that the jaguars get a guy like gary kubiak as the offensive coordinator and I think that, you know, he obviously knows, like, he knows Houston really well. You know, he'll he'll know, he'll, like, how to beat Houston. You know, he'll have some keynotes there. And there's also a debate that ASC South has a lot of solid young quarterbacks. And if the Jaguars go and get Flacco, that's going to set him back or whatever. But at the same time, if we do end up tanking with Flacco, who are we really hurting in the long run? You know, we still have guys like Tua Tagalaiova coming out next year, Justin Herbert as well, who hopefully this year he turns the corner because I was not very high on him uh, this year. So hopefully, you know, his senior year or junior year, I believe, he can uh, step up and really show something, uh, maybe change my mind. And then, you know, the year after that, Trevor Lawrence from Clemson, he could declare. You know, there's a lot of young guys that are upcoming that we could wait to get and stick with a guy like Flacco and see what we can get. Or we can put all of our chips in Dwayne Haskins and see what we can get with him. But you know how that's worked for the job wars in the past. So I'm saying let's go out and stick with a veteran quarterback for a couple of seasons. And that was what should the Jaguars do at the quarterback position in 2019. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, at Trave Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevin Pixley, or follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trave Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.